What's going on everyone? This is Charlie and we promised you guys an exclusive video on our YouTube of the review of this movie right here, Scream. Yes, finally, if you haven't seen the movie, shame on you. Now let me um, advise you guys, there may be some spoilers, some inevitable spoilers. So if you haven't watched the movie and you plan on watching it, stop right now. Thank you very much because you're going to get pissed at me. Wait, that being said, pissed. Listen, this is just a review. It's my thoughts, my own opinions. And like assholes, we all have opinions, right? So, it's my opinion, y'all. Don't get mad at me. Don't be coming at me in the comments because I'll send Jesus after you. All right, let's get to it. Let's get to the Scream review. I want to be, you know, there's so much. Me being a fan of the, the franchise and of Wes Craven. Wes Craven is a... Amazing director who sadly passed in 2015. He directed and held my favorite scary horror slash of all time, Nightmare on Elm Street, my boy Freddy Krueger. He also did, of course, Scream 1 through 4. Unfortunately, as we know, he passed in 2015. So this is the first movie without director Wes Craven. And some of the legacy characters, like Nev Campbell, was apprehensive to coming back. But when she read the script, she was open to the idea. So with that said, yes, I mentioned legacy characters. This new movie is basically what they call a requel. What is a requel, you ask? Well, basically, a requel is a sequel to the original, but also kind of a remake. You don't want to call it necessarily a remake because you don't want to piss off fans or, I mean, let's be real. Hollywood has run out of fucking ideas and all we keep seeing is remakes and remakes and remakes. How many Spider-Mans have we seen now? Okay, moving on. But yes, a requel. So it's basically a way to seduce the older generation without pissing them off and introducing them to a new crop of fans. Let's continue. With that requel, we see legacy characters like Dewey, Gale, and Sidney Prescott return, played by David Arquette. Courtney Cox, and Nev Campbell. So here you go. Also, we've seen Deputy Judy Hicks from Scream 4 also return as one of the surviving members from Scream 4. Let's continue along. It opens up with the, you know, the first scene, the kill scene where someone always dies. But this movie was a little different, y'all, because this, um, the person, the victim of the opening scene actually survived. And that is because she was played by... Jenna Ortega, Tara, and the point of her attack was basically to lure her sister back, Melissa Barrera, um, who plays Sam in the movie. Now, here we go. Here comes the spoilers. Sam has a secret of basically why and the premise of why she's lured back and a main plot of how she's the new girl. When I say the new girl, it's basically what Sydney's character was, the surviving girl. Um, Sam is actually freaking related to... Y'all ready for this one? Are y'all ready? Because I was mind blown going into it. She's related to none other than Billy Loomis. She is Billy Loomis's daughter. Yes, I. they kept that secret really good. Because going into it, I did not know about it. I didn't even read spoilers about it. So I was blown. And to see Skeet Ulrich digitally mastered. Listen, I guess who says you're too old to act when you could just digitally look young? But yes, we've seen a digitally mastered Skeet Ulrich make an appearance in the movie. Basically, he's Sam's dad. So this new scream opens up the next few chapters in so many different ways but let's pump our brakes and let's continue on let me not jump ahead of myself so let's get to it let's continue this review basically my thoughts on the movie i loved it as a horror fan i loved it um i love the nuggets the easter eggs i call them nuggets easter eggs i call a lot of things nuggets but i don't even eat chicken nuggets like that anyways um a lot of Easter eggs from little details like Elm Street. Hello, Wes Craven, Elm Street. That's a nod. And that's where Sidney Prescott lived, as we learned in Scream 1. And they obviously showed it again. Elm Street. We also have a character um, played by none other than Dylan Minnette um, from 13 Reasons Why. His name is Wes Hicks. 
He's actually Deputy Judy's son in the movie. Wes, also a nod to Wes Craven. Little details like that. And, guys, get this. Come listen up for this one. Another Easter egg, another little, if you paid attention to the movie, Scream, and if you watch all the franchises, in Scream 4, we had a character, Kirby, played by Hayden Panettiere. Well, we've seen Kirby get stabbed in Scream 4, but we never really knew and seen a body bag, etc. And guess what? If you paid attention in a scene in Scream 5, there is like a chat room thing where it basically confirms Kirby's alive. So again, this is just opening the storyline for parts to come. Because we know there's going to be a part 6 and a part 7. Let's continue. Or are they going to just call it like, you know, Scream, Kills, Scream, Afterlife. Who knows? But anyways, um, Kirby is still alive. Yes, yes. Also, when Sydney gets the call from Dewey, and she's on her run. We find out that Sydney not only has kids, but she's married to Mark. Mark, who's Mark, you may ask? Well, if you go back to Scream 3, the detective, Mark Kincaid, there we go. So now we are piecing all these little things together. So Mark Kincaid is still part of Sydney's life. Could we see Patrick Dempsey in one of the future Screams down the line? We shall see. All those little Easter eggs like that I was just geeking out over. And there's more, but let's continue with the movie. Okay, so I just want to get to my personal thoughts of the whole movie and, and what I thought. Out of five Charlie Nuggets, I give the movie, right now, if you ask me, three and a half nuggets. Why is that? Because the only, I love the movie. The only letdown for me was the reveal and the motive behind the killers. Yes, Spoiler, I told you guys there will be some spoilers. There's more than one killer. And the reveal and the motive was just very lackluster for me. I wanted more. It left me wanting more like, no, I wanted someone else to be the killer. Or I wanted more of a reasoning of why these people are killing. Kind of didn't make very sense and kind of repetitive to the motive of part four. That was my only letdown with the screen movie. Also, going into it, there was definitely, I knew one of the legacy characters were going to die. Going into it, I just, I mentally prepared myself. It's kind of like, you know, somewhat like when someone's gonna go, someone's gonna go. I had to mentally prepare myself walking into it. And yes, we did lose a legacy character and we also lost other people from Scream 4. So, again, don't want to give too much away, but you're definitely going to feel that death. Definitely going to feel that death. Anyways, let's continue. Um, Overall, great movie. Three and a half nuggets. My disappointment was the reveal and who the killers were, but I truly feel that it's been set up for part six and so on. And they have so much, and they set us up with so much material of what's to come and what they could do with it. Now, there's a lot of online speculation and fan theories that Stu Marker is still alive. Stu Marker was one of the killers of the original Scream where the TV drops on his head. A lot of speculation is that he's still alive. And if you really do your research, you will find out that there was an original ending for Scream 3 that involves Stu Marker. So are they saving that for maybe what's to come down the line? Remember, in this Scream, the party took place that Act 3 and C took place at Stu Marker's old place, um, who was purchased by one of the killer's parents. Spoiler! I told you there was going to be spoilers, people. Don't be mad at me. But, yeah, so there's so much more to come in the Scream chapters. I see it. I love the setup. My only letdown, I would say, with this movie was the killers and the reveal. I think there could have been more. But I love the killings. I love the new ways and setups of, like, killing people and all that stuff. It was I, I definitely enjoyed that because how many times and how creative could you get with a knife? But um, I definitely did enjoy the killings. Um, I definitely recommend it. I definitely recommend it. 
I've always been someone who has gone to see movies and be a critic myself um, and judge myself versus letting online people tell me like me. But, you know, I still want to give you guys my take, uh, my surprises, my excitement with it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. And for more, make sure you subscribe to our Inner Circle page. Make sure you're following everything that Inner Circle Podcast, especially our YouTube, because we are giving you exclusive bonus content. See you guys. Like, share, comment, but be nice or I'll send Jesus after.